bbc.co.uk. Send in more questions for Dominic Moore. Thanks. We'll see you guys right after Hard Westry's Gory Games. It's brand new. When are you going to... If mummies, rats and fleas ain't your thing and you don't like the sound of an exploding king if you're easily scared and don't laugh at poo you better turn off this show and for you Still watching? Then let's test your brains With Horrible History Story Games Horrible History Story Hello and welcome to Horrible History's Gory Games with him, Rattus Rattus, and me, Dave Lamb. This is the show where... Uh, shouldn't you be Larry Lamb? Sorry? Well, it's Horrible History's Gory Games. Rattus Rattus. Larry Lamb. Dave, all right? It's Dave Lamb or Mr Lamb, if you like. All right, keep your wool on. Larry Lamb. This is the show where we test your knowledge of horrible histories with quirky quizzes and gory games. So without further interruption from the rat, let's meet our horrible historians. Hello, I'm Joe. Hiya, I'm Holly. Howdy, I'm Miranda. Excellent. Dave, Dave, what? Can we play a little warm-up game that I've devised? No. It's from the Victorian era and it's called Tosh for Dosh. Yeah, have you run any of this past our bosses at CBBC? No, of course not. They might have said no. Right, let's have the buckets. Hang on, <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. What are you up to? It's just history, Larry. It's Dave. Hmm, all right. In 1865, Joseph Bazalgette built his famous London sewers, or as we know them, Rat City. <laughs> Poor Victorians would descend into the sewers and go... Toshing, hmm. wading through the poo to look for dropped coins. Oh. All you lot have to do is find the five shilling coins I've hidden in your bucket of poop, and your time no, starts no, no, now. No, 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 uh, no way. We are not having people wading through excrement on my show. Someone's going to have to anyway, because I dropped your car keys in one of the buckets. <laughs> oh, brilliant! Thanks, Rastus. That's just wonderful. That is. Which one was it? I think it might be the middle bucket. It might be the middle bucket. Brilliant. Oh, for heaven's sake. Can I get some towels, please? Towels for Larry, please. It's Dave. Glory Games. Can I just say that it's never a good idea to put your hand in poo? Oh, good night. Right. Joel, Holly and Iander, you're playing to win year spheres. Each year sphere contains a historical date, and at the end of the show, your year sphere dates will be added up, with AD dates being added to your total and BC dates subtracted from it. So, if these were your year spheres, your total would be Rattus? Sorry, Rattus. Your total would be Rattus? Oh, it was warm and smelly. I liked it under there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> my heart says four, but my head says 12. It's 735. Ah, oh, typical. That's what my elbow said, and I just didn't listen to it. At the end of the show, the person with the highest year score will win a special historical prize picked out by my furry friend. Ah, something that will truly make your friends jealous. Providing your friends are sewer-dwelling rodents. Well, I know mine are. Yes. Right, let's get going. And to find out what this round's about, over to the gory grid. It's the measly Middle Ages. Your four Middle Ages topics are cures, fashion, knights and burps. <laughs> Joel, you get to pick first in this round? I think I'll pick knights. That is a question from my dear friend Rattus Rattus. True or false? In 1291, some knights tried to storm the city of Acre. They approached at night, but their surprise attack went wrong when one of the knights stepped on a cat which woke up the defenders. Is that true or is that false? Let's see your answers now, please. Well, Joel and Holly have agreed with true. Iander has gone for false. Rattus, put us out of our misery. What's the answer? False. It all went wrong when one of the knights fell headfirst into a toilet ditch. <laughs> he made such a racket, he woke up all the defenders. <laughs> I'll shut up. <laughs> Holly, it's your turn to pick next. Cures, please. Cures. True or false, one Middle Ages cure for the Black Death involved shaving a live chicken's bottom and strapping it to your armpit. Very good. Holly and Joel agreeing again. Iander out on his own with false. Let's see what the answer is. It's true. And it sure worked for me. <coughs> or maybe not. <laughs> Iander, your turn to pick a topic all square at the moment. Fashion. True or false? 
In the 1400s, it became fashionable for women to wear tall pointy hats called steeples. The monk Thomas Colliet said all women should wear them. Let's have a look at those answers. Well, once again, Holly and Joel are agreeing with each other. They've gone for false. Iander's out on his own with true. Let's see who's right. It's false. He said, they're a sign of the deadly sin of pride. Burn them and wear humble peasant caps instead. Well, there we are. There's one question left in this round. Everybody can still feasibly win. The question is on burps. True or false, it was considered acceptable in the Middle Ages to burp at the dinner table. Everybody has gone for true. It's a clean sweep. Are you all right or are you all wrong? It's true. You could burp at the table as it was a sign of enjoying the meal. <laughs> <laughs> this, however, is not the Middle Ages. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's even worse. OK, that's the end of that round, and I can see from the abacus scoreboard in front of me that Joel and Holly have tied on three. Iander, you're not in the buzz around your history just for now, but don't panic, plenty of time to come back. You two, fingers on buzzers, please. We're going to the tie-break question. Beginning with the letter M, what is the name for the broad ditch filled with water that surrounds a castle? <laughs> Holly. A moat. It is a moat. Congratulations, you get to pick a year sphere. Oh, like a hook-handed pirate clearing his bogeys. Oh, please do it carefully. <laughs> Good choice, bad choice, who knows? Excuse me. It's true, any one of these could contain a Stone Age date worth millions of minus points. So winning the quiz means Holly is automatically through to play the Middle Ages game, but will she be alone or will everyone else get to play? <laughs> it's an all-play gory game. It's off down the time sewer with a lot of you. Yeah. Lead on, Iander. <laughs> William the Conqueror was a very unpleasant man and his funeral was an appropriately unpleasant occasion. His servants stole his treasure and the church burnt down. It's time to play Yakaroo. You are William's servants, and your challenge is to take his treasure and put it in your chest. All the treasure is colour-coded, and you must only take your own colour. Whoever collects the most pieces wins the year sphere, and you'd better be quick, because the church is going to burn down. Your time starts now. <laughs> Here we go, then, with Yakaroo. Basically, they're looting a tomb and someone is going to explode. And it's Holly who opens her account with a little goblet there. A little goblet stolen from William the Conqueror. Joel straight back at her there with a candlestick of his own. But Holly has a plate. 2-1. Nothing for Iander as yet. Look at this. Joel is about to level it up here. Yes, it's two apiece. Well, they're showing themselves to be very good at stealing, aren't they, these two? Superb effort. Iander yet to trouble the scorers. <laughs> oh, look out. Holly's got herself a candlestick. She goes back into the lead, readjusts her glasses there sensibly. The reason she's wearing those spectacles is because someone is about to explode. And Iander's off the mark, which is lovely. Oh, there goes oh, uh, William the Conqueror. Oh. He's exploded everywhere, and you have to say, Joel felt the full force of those intestines as they rained down on his head while he tried to steal a trinket. What a massive explosion that was. It really went up, didn't it, Ratton? It certainly did. There were guts, gore and in it everywhere. Oh, they really were. That was quite extraordinary. But back now to the theft, which is, of course, the main part of this game. I think Iander maybe has been stealing treasure that's not colour-coded for him. I'm a little concerned that I can see green in his chest there, and I shouldn't be able to see green in his chest. I should be able to see yellow, and yellow alone, Rattus. It's a... Look out! I'm sorry to cut into you there, but the building's on fire. They're going to have to get out of there quick. The fire's taken hold. Someone's going to have to get those kids out of there before the building burns down. It's ended up with an absolute dead heat between Holly and Joel. Joel, you are very, very fast. Thank you. I could rat up a drain pipe. Well, you'd know about that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Big yeah. one, yes. And I end up, you know you're only supposed to get the yellow treasure. You managed to get a bit of green and a bit of brown. Yeah. Well, I can tell you that because of his generosity, I end up only managed one piece of his own colour, but the other two of you tied with five pieces each. So, Joel, help yourself to a year sphere. Oh. <laughs> and Holly, help yourself to a year sphere. 
Lovely. Onwards, and to find out what's up next, it's over to the gory grid. It's the Rotten Romans. Here are your all-important Roman topics. Food, Caesar, Roman life, and sport. And, Holly, it's your turn to pick first this time. Sport, please. Here comes your question, ready or not. Chariot races took place in the famous Circus Maximus in Rome. But how many people could the stadium hold? A, 50,000, B, 100,000, or C, 250,000? Is it A, is it B, or is it C? Oh, there we go, the boys agreeing on B. Holly going for C. The answer is C, 250,000 people. So, that's a point for Holly. To put that into perspective, that is almost three times the size of Wembley Stadium. Or about the size of my immediate family. <laughs> or about the size of his immediate family, yes. A nightmare at Christmas. <laughs> Must be. Holly, that's fantastic. You have taken the lead in this round. Ayanda, it's your turn to pick a topic. Roman life. Oh, goody, goody, goody. This goody, 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 goody. is a prop question. <laughs> oh, I know what this is. What was this sponge on a stick used for? Was it A, cleaning windows, B, cleaning gladiator armour, or was it C, wiping bottoms? Let's see your answers now, please. Well, there wasn't much doubt there. They were grinning the moment the prop came out from the props table. They're absolutely right. It was for wiping bottoms. <laughs> can't hold it any longer. <laughs> he just loves bottoms. He, he can't help himself. <laughs> Let me award your points. There you go. Joel, pick a topic. I think I'll pick food. Which of these could you buy as a snack at the Roman Colosseum? A, boiled kittens, B, spiced budgies, or C, roast dormice? Well, there we go. Holly and Iander going for C. Joel out on his own with B. Let's hear what the answer is. C, roast dormice. They're best if fed on walnuts, acorns and chestnuts. Mmm, nutty. So, there we go. Points for Holly and Iander. There's one topic left in this round. This is a question about Caesar. After a war in Turkey, Julius Caesar famously said, Veni, vidi, vici. But what does the Latin mean? A. I came, I saw, I conquered. B. I came, I saw, I got a cold. Or C. I came, I saw, I killed. Let's see what you've got. Interesting. Joel and Holly going for B, Iander going for A. Let's hear what the answer is. A. I came, I saw, I conquered. <gasps> oh, Caesar was such a hero. <laughs> Shame about his huge nose. That's harsh, isn't it harsh? Very harsh. Joel, I'm afraid to say for now, your history. But Holly and Iander, you've tied on three points, so we go to the buzzer question. Here it comes. With the initials JC, which famous Roman leader defeated the Gauls, invaded Britain and was murdered in Rome? Holly. Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar is the right answer. Well done, Holly. You've won yourself another year, Sphere. Please go and collect it. As the quiz winner, you are through to play our Roman game. But will you be playing on your own or will everybody get to join in? <laughs> It's an all-play gory game. It's off down the time sewer with a lot of you. Down the stink hole. <laughs> <laughs> when Romans wanted to conquer an enemy city, there were virtually no lengths they wouldn't go to. It's time to play... Savage Siege. Romans would use catapults to fire all sorts of awful things, such as heavy rocks, hives of stinging bees, and even the severed heads of dead enemies. Your challenge is to fire as many missiles into your fortress target as possible. The person who gets the most in the time limit wins the year sphere. So, catapults at the ready in three, two, one. So here we go with Savage Siege. And in this, our contestants have to catapult a number of different objects towards a basket. And we see there that Joel has nailed one right from the off. Now, I think, interestingly, he swapped straight to a beehive. Maybe he should have stuck with heads, seeing as they were working for him. But beehives are working for Holly, all right, as she levels it up with Joel. Well, that's superb. What an excellent start. Oh, and she's in the lead. 
Ahead there from Holly puts her into the lead. Ihanda also off the mark now. So that's good. They're all they're all scoring, which is what we like to see. And in fact, they're all level now. So this is tight. Look at that concentration on Ianda's face there as he lets loose another stone. Doesn't hit its target. Two apiece. Level peg. I used to know some of those uh, rocks that Ianda's shooting there. Some of them were shy, but now they're a little bolder. <laughs> little bolder. Carry on with the narrating. Joel's back in it now. He gets his third point. Well, this is tremendous stuff. They really are getting the hang of this very nicely. And it's very, very close. Holly now, and crucially, with 30 seconds remaining, nails herself another head. But Ianda takes the lead again. Three, four, five, there it is. Oh, Holly's back at him. This is nip and tuck. It's incredibly close. Holly's now in the lead. Oh, they both scored within a millisecond of each other there. Six points apiece, incredibly close. That one goes way over the top, and Ianda scores. Could that be crucial? Could that be crucial? Joel now beginning to think about mounting a comeback. Ianda scores another one just on the hooter, and he takes it, eight, six, five. And the winner of the catapult challenge with eight points was Ian. Yeah! <laughs> and doesn't he like that? Ian, well help yourself to a year's here. Well done. The most powerful Roman catapult was called an onager, which is Latin for wild donkey, <laughs> because it kicked like a donkey, hard enough to knock down walls. I was once kicked by a wild donkey. In the head, by any chance? How did you know? Lucky guess. Over to the gory grid to find out what's up next. It's the Terrible Tudors. Here are your four Tudor topics. Punishments, Henry, marriage and football. Ianda, it's your turn to choose first this time. Henry. What did I found in 1534 that is still going today? A. The Navy. B. The Church of England. Or C. The Honour System of Knighthoods. Is that A, B or C? Show me now. Absolute agreement. Everyone's gone for B. Are they all right or all wrong? The answer is B. I founded the Church of England. Basically, it was all about getting rid of one wife so I could marry the next. Story of my life, really. <laughs> Very well played, you three. Everyone got a point there. Joel, it's your turn to pick a topic. Football. Prop question. Prop question. Prop question. This is a Tudor football made out of a pig's bladder. How many players were on a Tudor football team. Was it A, 11, B, 25, or was it C, an entire village? Let's see your answer, please. Everybody's gone for C, and I can tell you you're absolutely right. The villagers would compete against each other, there was no referee, and lots of people got injured. Two points each, two questions remaining. Holly, your turn to pick a topic. Marriage. See what you make of this one. How did Tudor women show they were unmarried? A. They stuck signs saying unmarried to their foreheads. B. They didn't wear bonnets. Or C. They wore aprons. Let's see those answers now, please. Oh, wow. Joel and Iander going for C. Holly going for B. Let's find out what the answer is. B. To show they were unmarried, Tudor women didn't wear bonnets. Well done, Holly. That means if you get this next question right, you will have won yourself another year sphere. But if you were to get it wrong, you two boys could still tie this round up. The final question is on punishments. What was the Tudor punishment for poisoning someone? A, being crushed under a stone, B, being poisoned, or C, being boiled alive? Well done. OK, so Holly and Iander are going for B, Joel for C. The answer is C. The Tudor punishment for poisoning someone was to be boiled alive. Way too soft, if you ask me. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, Joel and Holly are all square. Iander, you've got to sit this one out again, but we're going to a buzzer question. Fingers on buzzers, Joel and Holly. With the initials AB, what is the name of Henry VIII's second wife who had her head chopped off? Holly. Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn is right. Holly, you've won yourself another year sphere. Collect it now, please. OK, Holly, you're through to play the Tudor game, but will it be an all-play or will it be a single-play game? Let's find out. Hey. It's an all-play brainy game. What a lot of all-play games we're having. Get down that time sewer, the lot of you.
Elizabeth I liked to look good in her portraits, which meant her portraits looked nothing like her. Poisonous, lead-based makeup had ruined Elizabeth's skin, so she preferred to have portraits of her younger self copied rather than have artists paint how she really looked. It's time to play Puzzling Portraits. Your challenge is to assemble two perfect copies of an Elizabeth portrait. The only problem is your two puzzles are made out of differently shaped pieces. Complete your puzzles quicker than the other horrible historians to win the year sphere. In three, two, one. <laughs> So here we go with puzzling portraits. Two identical portraits of Queen Elizabeth I, but with different sized pieces. So two jigsaws at once, effectively. Iander seems to be progressing nicely with his right-hand portrait. The trick to this game is to graft on an extra pair of hands to your body before the start of the game so that you have a much better chance. Interesting tactics, Rattus. Completely useless, obviously, but interesting nonetheless. Dave, you're probably the only person old enough to have lived in Britain during the reigns of both Queen Elizabeth. Which one was the best? I'm not dignifying that with a response. It was the second one. Back to the game now, though. And Joel, look at him, going very nicely. Two portraits in operation at once. Iander there, having finished his first, is now working on his second. I don't know what's happened to Holly. She seems to be quite a long way behind the others. But it's really between the boys now as we watch this clash of styles, this battle between the two techniques, the double-handed version from Joel, the single, single approach from Iander. And it's going to be incredibly close. I think, by my reckoning, they've got two pieces left apiece. And Joel's going to be there first. He's done it. He's done it. He just beats Iander to it. Ollie, stop that. Welcome Thanks. back. Oh, that was God. so close. Joel, help yourself to a year sphere. Hey, do you know why you never see Elizabeth smiling in a portrait? Is it because she had rotten teeth? Precisely! Which is strange, because she cleaned her teeth regularly with sugar. <laughs> sugar toothpaste. That's a little counterproductive, isn't it? It'd be like Sugary. using mud as soap. What's wrong with using mud as soap? OK. Time for the final round. It's over to the gory grid one last time to find out who we've got. It's the vile Victorians. Good day. No quirky quiz in our final round. It's straight to our big all-play game. And what a scary one we've got for you. Everyone, get down that time sewer once again. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. Ah! When Queen Victoria was no more than a child, the monstrous crime of grave robbing was quite common. Dead bodies were stolen and sold to surgeons keen to experiment on them. It's time to play Grave Robbers. You are a rotten robber. Your challenge? To steal three bodies from the graveyard, get them through the railings, onto the carts, find the key to the cemetery gate and get them onto the surgeon's table. If you hear this noise, <whistles> then you must rush back to the cemetery and hide so the policeman doesn't spot you. A second whistle means you can go again. The first person to get all their bodies to the surgeon's table and grab their dodgy money is the winner. In three, two, one. <whistles> Through the metal railings to start off with, grab that body. Oh, the indignity. Look at these dead bodies just being wrestled through the railings. Thrown down then on their trolleys. Some of these dead bodies look in terrible shape, don't they? Extremely. And, and that is, of course, the fate of a dead body to deteriorate over time and look worse with every passing moment. Well, you're absolutely right. And Holly there has stolen a key from her dead body and is now opening the cemetery gates. She does that successfully and plops her first corpse onto the surgeon's table. Joel, seconds behind you. This is very close at the front. Iander falling a little bit behind the other two, but never mind. There's still time to catch up. Now Holly onto her second as Iander delivers his first there. Oh, she absolutely yanked that through. She grabbed it by the ankle and yanked it. Unceremoniously it was, yanked. It was, it was awful. I mean, it is awful, isn't it? really what's happening here. Graves are being robbed by children. But well, that's excellent, excellent stuff. Holly really is unnervingly good at grave robbing. But then now the policeman's blown his whistle. Oh. So they've gone into hiding. Here comes the policeman having a good look round the graveyard. If he were to spot them now, they would be in deep, deep trouble. And what a big hat he's got. He's a very serious-looking individual, but then he is a policeman, so is he, he had to be serious. And he's gone anyway. Whoever he was, he's gone. So they can come back out and keep stealing bodies. And that's exactly what Joel and Iander are doing there. A body apiece. Joel's doing very well now. He's right up the far end. There's Holly. 
There we go. Look at that. There's the second body delivered. So Holly's in the lead. She's really yanked that one through by one leg. They really do manipulate these bodies into some extraordinary shapes. I'd pay good money to a chiropractor for that, Dave. Well, I'm sure you would, Ratters. In fact, you have on many occasions. And here comes Holly, though. This is her final body. She's there. She's done it. She's picked up the dodgy money. Look, there she goes, just to get through the railings at the end now, and she's won it. And that money can be spent however she likes. Probably on a good solicitor, day. Well done, everyone. Holly, pick yourself up your final year sphere. Tremendous performance. Really excellent. Right, it's time to count up those year spheres. And remember, the AD dates are added to your total and the BC dates are subtracted from it. So the fact that you don't have the most number of spheres doesn't mean that you're not going to win. Joel, open up that first year sphere. Oh, dear me, 9,000 BC. Stone Age man started using bow and arrow around about then. That's not what you were hoping for. Let's have a look at the other one. Please do not wear BC. Oh, oh, oh come oh. on! 3,150 BC, the start of ancient Egypt. You've ended up with a score of minus 12,150. Bad luck, Joel. Holly, let's see how you're getting on. 64 AD, that's the year Rome burned down. 1492 AD, Christopher Columbus discovered the New World. 793 AD, Vikings attacked the Lindisfarne Monastery. 1665 AD, the plague. Let's have a look at the last one. 1871 oh, AD, the year that bank holidays were invented. Holly, you have a tremendous score of 5,885. Iander, it's slightly forlorn, the hope here. And you've got 264 BC. That, of course, was the first Roman Gladiator Games. But it does, of course, mean that today's winner, with 5,885 points, is Holly, who wins the star prize. So what's the big prize then, Ratters? Today's prize is a real treat to behold. In fact, it's been holed already. <laughs> yes, all the way from the Stone Age, it's your very own trepanned skull. It's had a hole knocked in the side to release the evil spirits. Those cavemen, eh? <laughs> well done, Rattus. The head of a dead man. Yet another terrible prize, but... Oh, I thought you'd like it. After all, you've got that photo of an ancient skull on your dressing room door. That's me. <laughs> oh, whoops! <laughs> it just remains for me to say thanks to our champion Holly, to our gallant runners-up Joel and Iander. Yeah! And no thanks whatsoever to Rassus. My pleasure. You've been watching Gory Games. Goodbye. Was that show messy enough for you? Or would you have preferred a little more poo? Have you had your fill of blood, guts and gore? Or have we left you still wanting more? Well, keep watching. We'll be back again. Horrible history story game. Horrible history story game. Games. Do you think Horrible Histories is really funny? Can't get enough of the vicious Vikings and terrible Tudors? Well, why not head over to the CBBC website and check all the latest clips and songs? Go to bbc.co.uk slash cbbc and click on Horrible Histories to start watching now. This is your instant guide to the week ahead. Friday Downloads. I'm going to teach you one move in dance download. I don't think yellow's my colour. I like it. Whoa, it is crazy in there. Go, go, go. We've got the pick of the best games, TV and movies. Very cool tricks in weekend download. About skills that you can show your friends on the weekend. The star download, where we help one of you. Games and gadgets download. Hello. I'm going to be taking you for a song. So don't miss Friday download. Fridays at 5.30 on the CBBC channel. Sonali here with three very good reasons to tune into Newsround at 10 to 7 tonight, right here on the CBBC channel. You can find out about the big developments in the world of gaming from this gadget show in LA. We show you what it's like to be fighting on the front line in Afghanistan from the view of a soldier. And we tell you about the shock dock worker from Kent who came face to face with this deadly black widow spider. All that and more on Newsround in just over half an hour's time. Bye. Ian 
and chat with Dominique Moore. Hmm. They're quite old, I wouldn't eat them. Welcome back. Eat. Oh, no. Oh. 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 I've already got so many emails left and so little time to read through them all. If only there was a way we could fire through them quickly. <gasps> Quick fire! <laughs> First one's from Dee. What's your favourite type of food? Uh, tortellini. Next one's from Ellie Mae. Would you rather marry Ian or kiss a toad? Marry Ian. Ugh. James. Hi, Dominique. Hi. Do you think Ian looks like a right moo in his jacket? No! I don't. Ro Roby, hello. Uh, can you ask Dominique to do her best animal impression, please? It will be funny. Uh, uh, <laughs> what was that? That was an angry cow. Wow, there you have it. Laura, an exclusive. Uh, dear Dominique, who is your best friend from the CBBC lot? Oh, well, TV's Gary Damon, who plays Lenny in Hotel Trouble, but. Ian now, because I spent the whole day with him, he's so much fun. In your face, Damo! In your face! Don't you mean? Sorry. Michelle. Michael, sorry. Do you like <laughs> playing tennis? I've never played tennis. There you have it, Michael. Uh, Alicia. <laughs> I would like to know if you like squirrels. Yeah? Red, not grey. Any preference? Pink. Don't exist. Jessica, Dominique, what's the most disgusting?